yesterday's uh, yesterday's newsletter was a tough one. It was called "Sex with the Devil." There are many people today having sex with the devil. Who are they? They are people who claim to be worshiping the true God and the true Christ, but they are actually worshiping a false god and a false Christ. And it's so ironic. The, the people I'm talking about are are Christians. And I know it seems like I, I overkill this topic, but every time I think of this, I get a new window into the depth of it, how real it is, and it shocks me anew every time. And I don't think I have yet made it completely clear what we're dealing with here. I know I haven't because I am still coming to an understanding of what we're dealing with here, of what compels and impels this religion, the most popular religion on the planet, which is full of hypocrites who say on the one hand, that God loves you. On the other hand, that if you don't love God, he will damn you. Who talk about grace, and yet you're one misstep away from an eternity of torment. This is the most confused religion on the planet. Who say that God is in control of everything. But every single human being on the planet has their own realm of sovereign control, otherwise known as free will. And that's 8 billion people. 8 billion people have free will. 8 billion people cannot be manipulated or influenced by God, and yet somehow at the same time, God is in control of everything. This cannot be. But the people who say this do it with a straight face. They just flat out contradict themselves. They say God is a God of love and a God of grace. But if you don't do what he says, he'll punish you for eternity. This is insanity. But, and this is intelligent people that are saying these things. They're gospel of grace. The good news. What's the good news? Most of humanity is going to be tortured in hell for eternity. That's the good news. And this is being forwarded by people who in other areas of life are rather sensible and practical. They have families. They're able to balance their checkbook. They mow the grass. Uh, they make enough money to, you know, send their kids to school. And yet, once they, when they pass through the threshold of a church, they become idiots. And they spew these contradictions. God's in control of everything. Every human being has a free will. God is good. God is merciful. God is loving. God loves his enemies. Uh, most of humanity is going to burn in hell for eternity. Uh, what causes them to do this? I know what causes them to do it. It is demons. Now, I'm not into the study of demonology. You don't have to be. When you look in the New Testament, you see that Jesus Christ wrestled with with demons. Well, he wrestled with Satan himself. Satan is the chief of the adversarial forces. But Satan, just as Jesus Christ, as angels, right? There are messengers, angelos in the Greek. They are spiritual powers, and there are even higher powers than that among the celestials, good and evil. But as Jesus Christ has good spiritual beings working to further his agenda, we have the opposition that God himself created to be in opposition temporarily until the opposition itself is overcome by the love of God and eventually becomes reconciled to God. Satan is the chief of the powers of the air. He's the numero uno bad guy, but he has minions. He has underlings, and but they're still very powerful, very powerful. And there is a particular a false god in charge of the Christian religion. Christianity is one of the four major religions on the earth. Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Christianity. Everything else is an offshoot. Each religion has a false god in charge of it because the object of religions is to get people involved 
in doing things for God so that they don't realize what God has done for them. That is religion in a nutshell. Get people busy doing things for God and assuming that they have to do things for God to get them so distracted that they don't realize what God has done for them through Christ. Christ is the end of all religions. Satan doesn't like that. Satan cannot change the cross. I know I've said all this before, but I just have new insight into it. I'm going to get to it. If you read my newsletter yesterday, you'll find that out. Satan cannot stop the cross. The cross happened. He can lie about it. And that he's the father of lies. I'm going to, go to, going to go to John chapter 8. Satan is the father of lies. And so he has built up religions. And he has made them very easy to join. He has made them very appealing, very popular, very fun. And in these religions, you get to work to be self-righteous. You have things to do. You have rituals. You have ceremonies. People love that shit. You can do it all day long. On Wednesday night, Sunday, so busy, so busy. In the meantime, you can't see what Christ has accomplished on the cross, which is the salvation of the entire world. You can't see the fact that God is sovereign over his universe because the Christians over here are telling you that you're sovereign over your little universe, your little self. You have a sovereign realm and nobody can get to it, not even God, because he gave you a free will. So now he's helpless to do anything with you. That's what they tell you. It's all, it's all a mess. All to avoid looking at the truth. The truth is right over here. Just look over here. No, Satan doesn't want you to look over there. Satan wants you to get busy over here. Satan has many, many things for you to do. And all these religions, especially the Christian religion, they keep you distracted. My example is always the Hope Diamond at the Natural History Museum in Washington, D.C. Here's the Hope Diamond. It's great, but Satan doesn't want you to see the Hope Diamond. So he's handing out free coupons to go to the uh, Air and Space Museum. Or the Hope Diamond isn't. See, he's distracting and he's going to lie the hell out of it. Lie the hell out of it. And so, these demons are real. Ladies and gentlemen, the false gods, there are false gods. Paul says in 1 Corinthians uh, 8, 6, it is, there are many that are termed gods. Yet for us, there's one god. But there are many that are termed gods. There are many small g gods in the universe. The false gods that the Israelites worshipped in the old days, they were real. They were not figments of the Israelite imagination. Okay, real powerful beings and they real comma powerful beings and they have influence over people on the earth. In fact, they have organized humanity into these giant religions. They have done it. The demons have done it. They have organized Christianity. They have organized human beings, the mass of humanity actually who are involved in religions, they are worshiping demons. They don't realize it because the demon, whatever demon runs Christianity, and I believe it is Baal Peor. Baal Peor was the actual name of a false god in Canaan when the Israelites went into Canaan. And I'll give you some details on that later. If you want to know, go to my newsletter. Go to martinsender.com. Go to my newsletter, ZWTF. You can find the archives on the left side of the page. Go to ZWTF archives. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and then go to the article titled um, Sex with the Devil. It's so ironic that the Christian religion, all religions really, they're on morality. That's all they care about. You have to be moral. You have to be a good person. And you have to concentrate on your morality to be acceptable to God. That is one of the main lies of every religion. Every religion has that lie in it. Buddhism, yes, you have to be calm. You have to meditate, concentrate. Hinduism, I don't know what the hell you do there. You sidestep cows um islam god you have to pray to mecca three times a day you have to do many 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 things in islam christianity the same thing and they are on morality campaigns they're always trying to get you to clean up yourself it's all con focused on yourself concentrated on yourself and the main thing is is sex christianity hates sex and sex is evil sex is evil they they say it's not. It's the most. It's the greatest thing invented by God for the pleasure of humanity. Oh, no, no, not according to Christians. No, you can't have sex here. You can't have sex there. You can't do this. You can't look at porn. You can't, you can't what? You can't look at porn. You can't masturbate. You can't look at a woman. You can't do anything. All this nonsense. And it's interesting because the false god Baal Peor back in uh, Leviticus, no, Numbers, it's in the book of Numbers, I think chapter 15, Oh, the Israelites went crazy over this God because this God, Baal Peor, actually set up prostitutes. 
and men would come into association with that false god through intercourse with the prostitutes. The irony here is, is that, see, Satan changes his operations to accord with God's new moves. Any new move of God, Satan's like counteracting it. It's like a chessboard. You're going to move your knight, now you're going to move your queen. Now you're going to move the pawn, now you're going you're gonna to move this. So now, sex is still the obsession of Baal Peor, who is, I believe, the god of Christianity. Only now, instead of indulging sex, instead of like, hey, have sex with this prostitute in order to unite yourself, to join yourself with this, with me, Baal Peor, the false god, now it's a battle against sex. But the result is the same. The result is distraction from God. That's It led people away from God. In the old days, you led them away from God by the women opening their legs, having sex with them, and it brought you into some spiritual union with with Baal Peor. It's called Baal Peor because of the region it was in. There was a mountain called Peor in Canaan, and this god operated in that area. But gods, the gods, small g gods, they're not limited to a certain geographical location. Oh, no. No, 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 no. They get around. So now the obsession is to drive sex out. Now the obsession is to clean up sex or whatever. It doesn't matter. It, this is the diabolical genius of these false gods. The result is the same in that people are distracted. They're concentrating on sex and they're, they, the hope diamond's over here. The hope diamond's over here. Christ is over here. What he did is over here. They don't know that because they're too busy cleaning up your life, trying to clean up their life, make themselves pre presentable to God. Somebody didn't tell them that Jesus Christ saved sinners, that Jesus Christ saved helpless people, that Jesus Christ saves wretches, and you don't clean yourself up to come to Jesus. So it's all a deception. It's all an illusion. It's all a delusion. But it's so amazing. Uh, the false god Baal, it's actually, Baal is B-A-A-L, it's the name of a group of false gods. Baal Peor was one of them, but think of this. These gods are so deceptive, the gods behind these giant religions that have, that have called mankind, pulled mankind, the whole of humanity, almost everyone in humanity is drawn to these religions. Each region of the earth has its own religion. So the false god that is running these religions that they that oppose Christ. How do I know they oppose God and Christ? Because the demons have teaching. The demons, in fact, the word religion in uh, the the Greek is deesi daimonia. That's the Greek word translated religion. It's a two-part Greek word. Uh, deesi is um, dread. Daimonia is demonism. It's dread demonism. But the word for demon, daimonia, is the same root word for teach. So the demons teach. And they infect humanity with false teachings about God. Eternal torment, false teaching about God. That you have to pray to Mecca three times a day and that God's angry, thunder and lightning. Of course, false message about God. That you have a human free will and it's up to you to save yourself. It's false teaching. False teaching. And yet these teachings infect humanity via the demons, the false gods, the small g gods, but they're powerful. They're powerful as hell, and they're ugly. But this is the opposite of the Wizard of Oz. In the Wizard of Oz, you had a kindly old man back behind the curtain who presented a scary face. I am the great and powerful Oz. Big, scary fire. <laughs> it's the opposite with religion. It's a kindly, gentle, nice face that you see. That's the first thing you see. Behind the curtain is the biggest, ugliest, eh, reptilian demon you've ever seen. The demons running these religions are huge, they're powerful, they're ugly, they're dripping, they're fanged, they're clawed, they're scaled. They are the ugliest thing, but on the front you see, welcome to our church. We want you to love Jesus. We need you to watch the nursery Wednesday night. Father Jim, Pastor Bob will have a prayer service. All oh, this nice. Oh, come join our church. We're a church. We teach grace. We have a new worship team. We have a wonderful new ministry. That's the outside. But behind the curtain, running the controls is a giant hairy demon. And I believe that demon is Baal 
pure, an actual false god. Actual. I mean, th th this is a nightmare, what I'm telling you. I mean, it sounds, I'm, I'm making it sound funny or whatever. I don't mean to be doing that, honestly. This is a nightmare, and this has been burdening me. Might be the reason I've, I've been sick. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm burdened by, by the fact that religion is so powerful, and it's so opposed to the true God in Christ. Here's how insidious it is, is that this goddamn demon, Baal Peor, actually presents himself when you walk into the city of Oz, i.e. the Christian church, when you walk in there, instead of seeing the big green face, I'm the great power of Oz, you see the nice, oh, it's a beautiful church, it was just remodeled, you smell the fresh smell of paint, the carpet is new, they have a new gymnasium over here, but this God, this false God has actually taken the name of God in Christ, yes, taken the name this is idolatry at its most hideous to actually take the name this false religion of Christianity has taken the name the only name under heaven by which humanity is saved Jesus Christ it has taken stolen this false God Baal Peor has stolen the name of Jesus Christ and wrapped its this name around its false religion this demon is gonna suffer later for that that is a uh, grand theft auto uh, stealing the name of God the name of Christ and putting it on this false package and leading millions of people astray. Wow, look, it's a Christian church. Aren't we Christians? Don't we name the name of Christ? Don't we worship God? No, they are actually worshiping Baal Peor. They are actually worshiping a false god. They are, every damn one of them, idolaters. They don't know it and they won't know it until everything's revealed, everything's unveiled, the curtain comes off, and it will be seen what these things were. It will be seen. You and I know now. Why? Because we're spiritually astute, and we look at the teachings, because we know that the Greek word diesi daimonia is dread demonism, and we also know that daimonia is the same root word for teaching. Demon and teaching, same root word. We're looking at teaching, and we see these doctrines, they're just teachings, right? The statement of faith. Look at every statement of faith of every Christian church you've ever seen. The statement of faith. The first thing they have is the Trinity. That's the first false teaching. That Jesus Christ is God the Father. No, he's the Son of God. Son of God. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Jesus never claimed to be the Father, okay? And this messes with the death of Christ. If Jesus Christ is God the Father, instead of what he said he was, the Son of God, then he couldn't have died. So that wrecks the death of Christ and therefore wrecks the resurrection of Christ. You know that. I've been through that with you a thousand times. The doctrine of eternal torment. Nothing could turn more people from God unless you're in the Christian cult, in which case you love it. You drool over it. Eternal torment. Oh, we wish it wasn't true. Bull crap. No, you're glad it's true. Because when I show you verses showing you that it's not true, that it's based on a mistranslation, I don't want to see it. No, of course you don't, because you like eternal torment, because you're a slave of Baal Peor. And Jesus said this to the Pharisees. I thought I was going to be able to get to this today, but I don't have time. I can't believe it. I was going to go to John 8. He, Jesus actually tells the Pharisees that they're of their father, the adversary, Satan. He tells the Pharisees, this is the main system in the day of our Lord. It's the equivalent today of Christianity. It really is. The system of the Pharisees in, in Jerusalem, that was mainstream religion. And those guys were convinced that they were worshiping Abraham. They're convinced they're worshiping God. They told Jesus that. We're worshiping God. God. And Jesus said, no, you're actually of your father, the adversary, the devil. You're actually of the devil. And they, they're, they're like, their heads are exploding when he says this to them. It's the weirdest thing they could, they, 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 their heads exploded. Nothing could have been stranger to their ears than to hear that they are worshiping uh, Satan. So you think it's a strange thing that I'm telling you. The Christians think they're worshiping God in Christ, but they're actually worshiping Baal Peor. They're actually worshiping a demon. They're actually worshiping a small g.
a small g god. Christianity is worshiping a small g god who is disguising himself as the real God and the real Christ. This answers everything. This answers 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul talks about a different Jesus, right? This is not the Jesus that we're worshiping. We're worshiping the Jesus who's successful. We're worshiping the Jesus Christ who saved the world, who came into the world to save sinners, 1 Timothy 1.16, and actually did it. That's the Jesus we're worshiping. They're worshiping a failure. They're worshiping a Jesus who's hanging on the cry. I hope people like me. I'm going through a hell of a lot here. Sorry, Jesus. The result is eh, most of humanity is going to die. But I, I wanted to save them all. Well, maybe if you'd had an extra hour on the cross, six hours wasn't enough. Maybe a little, a few more thorns would have done it. Maybe, maybe a few extra lashes with the whip. You know, I, if they only would have spit on you more, maybe you could have gotten more people. What a waste of six hours. Yeah, what a waste waste of six hours. That is the shit teaching going out from Christianity. Only a demon can inspire that crap and have people call it God. They call that God. They call that, they call that loser of a savior. They call him Jesus. And they call the God who gave away his free will to every human being on the planet. They call him God, but it's not. It's Baal Peor. They're worshiping a false god. When the curtain comes open and they see who they have been, who they worship their entire life, they're gonna. Be, you, that, that's where the weeping and gnashing of teeth comes in, Christians. That's where it comes in. That's where the fury and indignation that is paid to those, as Paul talks about in Romans chapter two, at the great white throne, when all is revealed and the truth comes out, and they see the whole time. How do you think it's gonna happen? Where Jesus says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do wonderful deeds? Didn't we do mighty miracles in your name? In your name, get it? In your name, get it? That name has been stolen by Baal, stolen by a false god. Jesus will say, depart from me, workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. I never knew you. How could that possibly happen? Because they never knew him.